Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Austin's Grim, Perry Logan, and his guest host, Mr. Grim, Lord and Master of the Land of the Grim. You see, somehow, tragically, or perhaps comically, America has turned from the land of opportunity to the land of the Grim. You can cite bummer stats all day long. And Perry likes to do so. Obama apologists like to say Obama has accomplished many things, and yet all the vital stats suggest everything is worse. Poverty is higher than ever. Income disparity is higher than ever. The misery index is at a 28-year high. Don't you get it? It's been four years, and things are worse than ever. And that's grim. That's grim for the Democrats. But the Republicans equally are in a kind of a la-la land. But they're clearly trying to send us back to the 1980s. This is Thomas Jefferson. Welcome to the land of the Grim. This is Thomas Jefferson up in heaven with a number of other very angry founding fathers who cannot help but notice that you, the surplus and hapless people of the 21st century, have turned the land of opportunity into the land of the Grim. We would like to thank you for throwing human rights out the window with the NDAA, a law every American should know about and should protest. We would like to thank you for turning us into murderers with killer drone strikes everywhere, a blatant violation of international law, and you know it damn well. I, Thomas Jefferson, once declared that I hoped we would not fall prey to the rapacious corporations who might well destroy the Republic, and I would like to thank you all for letting it happen. And I would like to thank you all for letting Ronald Death Squad Reagan sell your damn country out to the corporations. Way to go. I, Thomas Jefferson, speak for all the Founding Fathers. We are waiting up here in heaven to kick your butt. Thanks for turning America into the land of the grim. George Washington agrees with me. That's right, Thomas. Benjamin Franklin agrees with me. Ah, that's right. That's right, Thomas. Tom Paine agrees with me. Damn straight, Thomas. Bloody hell, goddammit! Betsy Ross agrees. Damn straight, Thomas! Oh! You. Were you laughing? Excuse me, were you? Was someone in this auditorium laughing? Love that thunder. Hey, this is Mr. Grimm, who rules over the land of Grimm. And I thought I heard someone laughing because they were watching the Perry Logan show, the funniest show ever. The, I'm sorry, the silliest show ever. <laughs> Stop laughing! Stop laughing. This is Mr. Grimm. This is Mr. Grimm. I command you to stop laughing immediately. This is the land of the Grimm, damn it. Stop laughing. Stop laughing or I shall have to bite your head off. Hey, I thought I heard someone laughing and there can be no laughter in the land of Grimm. There can be no color in the land of Grimm. Sorry, thunder just freaks me out. Thunder gives me orgasmic pleasure, all right? This is Mr. Grimm. Abandon hope, all ye who enter here, for this is the United States 
on or about August 16th, 2012. <laughs> when America has become the land of the grim. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just keep that lightning coming, Bob. America has become the land of the grim, and I, Mr. Grim, lord over it. <laughs> hey. It's so grim, I could offer you statistics all day. I could drive you mad with the statistics I know. Now do you understand why I, Mr. Grim, am so mad? <laughs> Stop laughing! Stop laughing! I thought I heard laughter in the land of the grim. And I'm just trying to tell you, I could drive you insane with the statistics I know as to how grim, <laughs> colorless, <laughs> and incredibly rainy it is. What's the deal with the rain, Bob? Do we need the rain? Bob? Bob? I thought I heard some laughter, and I'm here to quash it. Did you say quash it? I said quash it. Are you, are you gonna give me a hard time about every word I use? This is Mr. Grimm, damn it. And I'm the ruler of the land of Grimm. You see, what happened was the land of plenty, the United States, somehow has been transformed into the land of the Grimm. <laughs> Stop laughing. <laughs> this is the land of the Grimm, where no laughter is allowed. Stop. As the host of this Perry Logan show, I, Mr. Grimm, hereby command you to stop laughing. Thank you for your cooperation. I'm sorry I had to kill all of you. <laughs> but seriously, folks. The United States, once the land of opportunity, the cornucopia, the hope, the beacon, the sustenance of the world, the land to whom our French brothers and sisters gave us the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> Which said, oh, please welcome to these shores your huddled, wretched masses, the more wretched the better. For you see, this, this is, is the land, land of the, the Grim. Grim. Wow. Whoa, hey, this land of the Grim turns out to be just as much fun as you can imagine. Wow. Perhaps it's because everyone in America has been driven mad by bad stats. I know Perry Logan's been driven mad by bad stats. Now's your chance to just look at these bad stats. Ow! These are some bad stats. Stats worthy of a land with no color, a land with no hope, a land with no change. Where both our good friend Barack Obama and our good friend Mitt Romney is going to attack Iran. Forget all about deficits. Continue the Bush-Cheney slash Obama attacks on human liberties where the rich suck up all the wealth as a vampire sucks the blood from an open thing. Too damn grim, right? That makes you lose your marbles. Yeah, watch out for the stats. If you find good stats, you might lose your marbles, as I have lost my marbles. And those stats will... <laughs> you, you can pluck them out of the air. Hmm. The poverty rate is at an all-time high. <laughs> I guess it wouldn't taste good, would it? The misery index is at a 28-year high. Now, just think about that. Just wait, 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 wait a minute. Hey, get serious. 
Cut it out with that lightning, Bob. <clears throat> you know what lightning does to me. Ah, oh. hey, wait a minute, Mr. Grimm, let's get serious. I was trying to amplify on that whole misery index thing, all right? Well, the point is the misery index is itself an index of many things, is it not? Yes, it is. Repeat after me. Yes, it is. Yes. Hi. In case you just tuned in, you're repeating, yes, it is. In answer to my assertion that the misery index contains many elements, you see what I mean. If your misery index is high, you are truly miserable, as if the sun was vicious mosquitoes of economic ruin. Your rights being treated as trash by both Congress and the President. <coughs> and those bloody Obots, those bloody Obama fans. <coughs> oh, land of the grim. Oh, wither, land of the grim. I think I speak for all sentient beings in the universe when I say, wither, land of the grim. Hey, I've even got my problem here is that on this very date, on this very date, August 16th, 2012, yes, sometimes they tell me the date, Yay! but they rarely give them the right date, okay? Honest, the breaking news today is that Julian Assange has been granted asylum in Ecuador. Yes, thank you, Ecuador. Here, come here, Ecuador. Come here. <laughs> Thank you, Ecuador, for granting asylum to our brother, Julian Assange, a true hero of our times. <laughs> <laughs> but I was going to tell you some good news, even though we're in the land of the Grimm and I'm Mr. Grimm and all that. But actually, Julian Assange... Uh, was granted asylum by Ecuador. It's breaking news, so uh, nobody really knows. Nobody in my space time frame, all right? Would you cut me some slack on that time, space, that space time frame thing? Bloody hell! Bloody hell! <laughs> Had to have a tantrum. I feel better. Well, in all seriousness, nobody knows for sure if Julian is going to be okay. But Ecuador, in the, Julian uh, resides currently in the, uh, in the uh, embassy in London, in the Ecuadorian embassy. It's that bad. And, uh, the, you know, it's grim. It's grim. How are they going to get him to Ecuador? Questions arise. You see, the problem is the United States is like chomping at the bit to give Julian Assange the Bradley Manning treatment. That's because you see we once were the land of opportunity and we are now Did I say the United States has become I said the land of the grim <laughs> yes. And stop that laughing. <laughs> so, you find grimness to be amusing, huh? Okay. <laughs> you people are all crazy. <laughs> Why, yes, in case you were wondering where I'm coming from, I am one of those who celebrates uh, Julian Assange possible safety. He may be safe. And uh, here's the grim part, though, in keeping with the theme of this show. Here's the grim part. Uh, Jillian is essentially afraid of being imprisoned in America, where they start punishing you before the trial. <laughs> There's precedent for this. Bradley Manning, who is a, a soldier, another hero of mine, I'm sorry, Bradley Manning, has been uh, finally accused of an actual crime and, and being put through oh, 
Do you know what a kangaroo court is? Come on now. Wikipedia, kangaroo court. Okay, well that's the deal. Uh, Bradley Manning is famous for having been essentially tortured by our people. Bradley Manning was essentially tortured under Obama's watch, essentially tortured by our people, and essentially tortured before he had even been accused of anything. Grim. Land of the Grim. Oh! This is Mr. Grimm. May I remind you, there's no laughter here in the land of the Grimm. <coughs> United States tortured Bradley Mann. <coughs> uh, as if the statistics, as if the bad stats had not driven you nuts. <coughs> oh, as if the shootings, shooting after shooting after shooting. Shooting after shooting after shooting. To further embed this show, in the context of space-time, or in the web of space-time, we are experiencing in America shooting after shooting after shooting. Don't you love that? Yeah. Mass shootings of different kinds, horrible murders at movie theaters, murders at places of sick worship, murders uh, mass murders made possible by lax and flaccid, loosely, like loose bowels, made possible by lax and flaccid gun laws, <coughs> poorly enforced, which allow the gun guys to continue their war on America. <coughs> yeah, yeah, how's this for Grimm? There's a certain number of guys, they're just mostly guys, and they're just forgive me, mostly white guys in the U.S. who have this little thing about guns. You know, they're gun guys, but they're doing extremely well. They have a lot of corporate backing from the NRA, which is like a big corporate thing, a powerful lobby, okay? All right. And they've had it their way. I just wanted to take a moment to point out that the, the gun guys, the pro-gun folks, and their allies are, uh, have you noticed how they keep escalating the war? Well, think about it for a minute. Think about how the gun guys and the pro-gun forces keep escalating their little war on their fellow citizens. Well, the gun guys would have you think it's all about their freedom, but wait a minute, they keep Upping the ante, they keep asking for bigger guns. They keep asking for more and more automatic weapons and the ability to have more of these weapons and bigger weapons. They're going to be asking for nukes soon, don't you know? Nukes are arms, so the gun guys will be asking for nukes soon. My point is, it's a little like the Soviet Union during the Cold War. Don't you remember that, at least that's the way we saw it, we felt that the Soviet Union kept pushing the limit and, and raising the ante on the arms race. That was our version of it. <laughs> well, the gun guys are the same way. They keep asking for bigger weapons. The better to open fire on us. Oh, and they, they, keep, they also ask for weapons, uh, the ability, the right, uh, to uh, take weapons into anywhere, right? To take them anywhere because they feel safer. And of course, they've got these horrible laws that give them the ability to shoot people because they're scared of them. Hey, these are gun guys. They're scared of everything, right? All right, I just wanted to take that moment to point out that, you know, the, the, the gun guys, to give them credit, are, are doing extraordinarily well in a country that wants and needs more gun control. It pretty much wants it and needs it, despite all the efforts. But, I just wanted to point out that kind of sneaky quality of the gun guys that they keep raising the ante, you know. They keep saying, well, wait a minute, now we want more weapons. Now we want more guns, bigger guns. We now live in a nation where you have to kind of think twice about going to a movie. Thanks to one mass murderer. 
an alleged mass murderer. Okay, there you have it. Now that is the land of the grill. Thank God for those bolts of light. Oh yeah. Hey, hit me with that light again, Bob. Oh. Oh. Hey, where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Where are we going? Hello, this is Mr. Grimm. Hey, here on August 16th, 2012, the political world offers us plenty of bummage. <gasps> political bummage is what we're talking about. The land of plenty has become the land of the grim. Other things that are grim are unique crises that go beyond anything that has been seen before. Is that big enough for you? Hey, 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 is that grim enough for you? Hey everybody, we face crises beyond anything humankind has ever faced. Chiefly global warming. <laughs> Okay, unless you believe what, what I would have to call the dumbest conspiracy theory ever. That's the conspiracy theory that all the scientists, hundreds and thousands of scientists all over the world, are deliberately writing articles in journals all over the world and other worlds as well. Each and every one of these thousands of scientists from uh, all different countries speaking all different languages and publishing their journals are all presenting as something which is 180 degrees contrary to fact. <laughs> Dumbest conspiracy theory ever. <laughs> They are actually conspiring uh, to falsify thousands, nay, millions of bits of information from all these people everywhere you see are deliberately switching them, giving them the old 180 degree switcheroo that only the global warming deniers have been smart enough to see. Is my sarcasm showing? Hey, how about that sarcasm, huh? Okay, okay, well, in truth, of course, global warming and global climate change are proving to be worse than ever. Worse than ever, even as I speak, if you want grim, we've got a joke going here. Ain't nothing funny about a joke, much less a record-breaking joke Record-breaking heat. Entire chunks of Greenland the size of Manhattan breaking off and falling into the sea. We must kill and eat the global warming deniers quickly, quickly. Don't you see why? Satire, satire. <laughs> we must satirically kill and eat the global warming deniers and do you know why? Well, I, Mr. Grimm, will tell you why. Because when it becomes too late for even the most insipid, dumb, global warming denier to deny that the, it's all getting hot and we're all just like totally bloody frying here. Okay. When it becomes too late to deny global warming, the global warming deniers will start blaming the liberals. Don't you get it? Ah, 
This is Mr. Grimm, turning over a new leaf with some good news. Julian Assange has apparently been granted asylum on this very day. But it's the whole thing is just, it really is fresh news, okay? And in fact, the grimness underlying it is that Jillian is hoping not to be uh, snagged by the U.S. and basically tortured, you see? Yeah, we've become the land of the grim. We've become the place people uh, seek political asylum from. Oh! <laughs> no, but that's grim. Oh, yeah! Good political news is we might be able to get those good people, the occupiers, to come home, as it were. Well, the ball is in the court of the occupiers, and I do think they've got to come home or risk being called screw-ups to the end of time by me, Mr. Grimm! Yay! Is that the occupiers might come home, i.e. help us fix a thoroughly broken, corrupted, and just really kind of like snotty, and <laughs> nuky, and <laughs> whizzy, and, and crappy, and yucky, and mucoid, and snotty, and plus like, oh, Tourettean moment, oh! Tourettean moment. Okay. Tourettean moment, it will be erased from your memory soon.